We're all on the edge of our seat now, Brandon. Is this going to happen? Right. Do we get music? <laughs> uh, we can just sing. Do you want to sing? Oh, yeah. Matt? Matt, really take it away. That you would lay down the beat, Brandon. Some, <laughs> some nice melodies. Melodies. Bring it. <laughs> lay down the beat. That's great. <laughs> you don't want that. Nobody wants that. Matt, do you sing? You guys have the, the choir bar. Are you do you lead those? I am willing to sing. Oh. That does not, that does not indicate <laughs> anything other than a willingness. That is not a statement of uh, goodness or skill. So we're not gonna see you on America's Got Talent next week or anything. Do you, do you remember um, this was this was a long time ago, but uh, at the um, one of the one of the casinos they used to have a show called um like lucky break casey lucky break casey and it was on it was on like late night local television and, no this, so this sounds awesome it, it sounds it, it, yeah, it, wonderful <laughs> bring it back um and and it might it might still exist it was at harris it was called harris lucky break and uh it was oftentimes the standard late night casino crowd singing country music oh. and the winner got to sing the national anthem at a nascar race um, <laughs> yeah uh not like a not like one of the good nascar races i think there's levels i don't know as much um but for my 21st birthday i performed at harris lucky break and I did not sing country, which I think threw him off a little bit. Yeah, um, I did. <laughs> I, I sang uh, You Can Call Me Al by Paul Simon. And I did do the air flute for the, for the, uh, the flute solo. Um, and uh, it is on YouTube. So maybe for, you know, the, the, post, the post email, if there is such a thing, if you can find it. Um, I'll do some digging and I'll send it out to everybody after Please this. enjoy. Um, but that was, that was, what, that actually was one of my first dates with my wife. That was for my 21st birthday because I was of age to go to the casino and we did Hair's Lucky Break and I did not win, but I was not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe Blade and Timber is ready for a karaoke uh, introduction. You know, we, uh, I'll get into this, but with Sinker's Lounge opening later this year, um, our hope is to bring Choir Bar back. Uh, and so it's kind of our, our spin on, um, you know, on the karaoke thing, but we'll get there. I love Matt, it. I found it. Oh my gosh, someone found it? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, we might have to sh we might have to watch that. Uh, <laughs> post on the event. Because it'll be out there now. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, we are uh, working our way on almost ten after nine. So let's just go ahead and get started. Oh, great! Becky put the link in the chat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everyone's going to be able to check it out. This is Love it. This is great. So awesome. Happy Friday, guys. Thank you so much um, for coming back um, to a new. Oh, Brandon muted me, but I figured right. it out. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I often feel like Brandon does that in real life. Just kind of, he's like, I'm done listening to you talk. So mute. He's gotten really comfortable with, uh, with Zoom meetings. So Okay. Anyway, um, thank you guys for being here this morning. Um, for those of you who are new, who don't know me, um, I'm Katie Vivas. I am the membership director with the chamber. Um, I'm actually here in the offices this morning and my light just turned off in case you wondered, but um, we're working our way back you know, to the, the normal that, that we can get into. So I'm glad that we're back on track with um, our neighborhood networking. We took a couple of weeks off for the holiday and for the listening sessions um, that the chamber's been doing, which if you haven't had a chance to sit in on those, I highly recommend it. Um, I will go over the calendar here in a little bit of when our next ones are, but they are informative, they are moving, they're just so, they're really fantastic. So 
Um, I thank you guys for bearing with us um, as we had pushed this back um, to this week. Matt, thank you so much for your flexibility in being able to bump it back a little bit. Um, so this morning with us, we have Matt Basinger, who is president, CEO, all of those things of Swell Spark, Blade and Timber. Um, he has agreed to wake up very early this morning. He is joining us from his hotel room in Seattle um, and is, is going to talk a little bit about what's going on. So um, yeah, that's, that's where we are, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Brandon, I'm going to kick it over to you to talk a little bit about what the morning's going to look like, and then we can get going. Forgot to unmute myself. Um, thanks, Katie. Nice job. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here this morning. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, just very quickly, we're going to um, get to know Matt here for the next 25, 30 minutes. Um, and then after that, we'll kind of just jump into some quick networking. Um, I'll prompt everybody with prompts like we do, and then uh, we'll do a little breakout session um, as well. So we're going to have fun. It's going to be a good time. Um, Matt's heading to Hawaii here soon, so we'll, <laughs> we'll get him off here quick. Um, let me stop sharing my screen here so we can see everybody. Nice. And then let me find my questions. And then so Matt, if you don't mind, while I am figuring my life out right now, um, do you mind giving a little bit of background on yourself, um, how you got Swell Spark started, um, and maybe where you're going from here? Absolutely. And I'll give you a heads up. My earphones just did the noise that they might die. And so if that's the case, I'll switch over and, right. and get started. So apologize in advance. But my name's Matt. I'm the uh, one of the founders of Swell Spark. You probably know us better as Blade and Timber or Breakout KC. Um, we like to make fun things. Hopefully, uh, I know that I've, I recognize some of the faces that I'm that I'm looking at. But we have been open now in Kansas City as Breakout KC for just over five years. Um, and from Kansas City, we initially expanded first to Honolulu, Hawaii. That's where I'm headed out here shortly. Um, but we, through the course of our two main companies, we have nine locations <coughs> um, throughout the United States. Um, but our headquarters are, are, are right here in Kansas City. Um, and so with that, uh, a lot of people like Matt Howe in the world, did you go from, you know, how did you get into escape rooms in the first place? How do you go from escape rooms to axe throwing? like what what do you how, who are you and what do you do <laughs> um but we you know we've really just come from this idea that we believe it's really important to have fun on purpose and so our hope and our goal is to gather people for shared experiences and give them a platform that makes it easy to have fun um, which has made covid uh, really fun and challenging because that whole gathering people for shared experiences thing um, is a little bit more challenging than it has been in the past um but we have um, been very fortunate to uh, have a home here in Kansas City to uh, really, I think, become part of Kansas City community and culture. Um, we, have, we have, you know, I guess pre-COVID, we were up to 240 employees across nine locations um, and, and really did a lot of that, not to say on purpose. Uh, I, I like to say that I've become an accidental business person. So my formal education is actually in education. I was a high school guidance counselor. Um, I used to teach at the University of Kansas, not in business, but in leadership development before all of this started. And, um, but it's been a real honor and a privilege to just be a part of, uh, a part of Kansas City. And it's fun. So I am, I'm here in Seattle, um, which is honestly one of my least favorite cities that I've ever traveled to. Don't tell them that, uh, though I announce it pretty often. That's fine. Um, but, you know, in growing our company and being around it, it, you know, we're looking at cities all over the country of where we should grow and expand. Uh, but we really genuinely believe Kansas City is, is, you know, maybe the best place in the entire country. It is an amazing place to be, an amazing place to grow, an amazing place to do business. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Thank you all for making time to listen to me sometimes ramble and talk about karaoke shows. And, and, and hopefully we have a, a beneficial morning. Yeah, we are glad to have you here. And when Brandon sends out the recording or post it to YouTube later, we'll just dub out the whole Seattle message. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle is great. Seattle is go. hot now. Thanks. There'll be a little voiceover for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, we are so glad to have you here. So the Chamber was fortunate enough to work with Matt and um, Blade and Timber last summer <laughs> to do your all's ribbon cutting in the Power Light area. Um, which was great for me because it just so happened to be on my birthday. And in case you guys don't know, Matt likes to party. And so he uh, had a waffle with candles and <laughs> sang. So it was really great. It was 
it was a really awesome experience. So, but with that being said, you guys weren't open in Power and Light for a significant amount of time prior to COVID. So how have you kind of shifted with everything happening with, are you keeping your kitchen open? Is there a way that, um, you know, we can help support things like that? Just what, what have you guys done to, to be sustainable in that space? Yeah, it, uh, you know, Swell Spark, we've kind of committed to being a per perpetual startup engine, right? We've launched a new concept about every two years for the last five and a half years now. So we have three that are kind of still still existing. And so obviously COVID is awful, um, but I feel like it really spoke to who we are. And so from the from the first point, you know, we partnered with Jay Rieger and we became the largest uh, we were their customer facing distributors of all of the Rigor Remedy hand sanitizer for the first eight weeks of COVID. And so we, we helped them distribute over 12,000 bottles um, all around the Kansas City Metro, all around the state of Kansas and also the state of Hawaii as well. But coming, you know, at, at some point we had to say, okay, we should probably start to focus on what business will actually look like afterwards. And so it just so happens that at Blade and Timber specifically, our axe throwing targets are literally six feet apart. Every single target center to center is six feet apart. And so we were kind of already built uh, from an experiential standpoint. We were already built for like a post COVID world. Um, that said, the way that we're operating right now is we've blocked off every other lane. Um, and, and But we have, we've changed our food offerings, right? So we, we went to things that basically require a lot less handling. Um, and, uh, and we did reopen basically the day that the city said that we could, but, you know, kind of being thoughtful, we just, we made the small transit, all, all the normal transitions that every company has made in order to keep staff and customers safe. But in addition to that, I think just with our knowledge of what we had been doing with the hand sanitizer and um, wanting to be intentional about making sure that our guests and staff are safe, we're, we're providing gloves, you know, we've shut down half our facility, we've changed our food. Um, but the response has been really good, um, you know, of, of the folks who have been willing to come back so far. Um, you know, we've had a couple weekends where we've been sold out already and sold out is again at a, a kind of a, a, a smaller capacity. Um, and then the other, the main thing that we've done is we've made it so it's private bookings only at all of our facilities. So previously you might have come in and, you know, if you only had three people, then we might have put you in a group with three more people. We don't do that anymore. Um, you only will spend time in and around with the people that, you know, that you paid money to spend time around. And so it, if any, you know, most people are like me and that they want to keep their circles kind of tight. And so I think we've provided a way for, for folks to do that. Um, but we, you know, in the midst of this, we were supposed to actually right around, right about right now, be opening our sinkers, our sinkers lounge, indoor mini golf bar and restaurant. Um, that obviously got pushed back and we still hope to open that in quarter four, but we also launched an at-home mini golf kit that um, had a lot of success. It was picked up by Forbes. It was one of the most bizarre experiences. I, I, I had to film this entire promotional video by myself in my basement at like eight, nine o'clock at night because I had to do it after the kids went to bed so that they wouldn't, I mean, it's adorable and they want to interrupt and come play golf, but I was like, I need to get this video done. Um, and then we also launched a, a virtual Zoom-based mobile escape game, um, which these were all mostly things that we were like, okay, we're going to do this for, you know, eight weeks during the COVID season. Um, but I think these are all products that we will keep. Um, the, the virtual escape room in particular, we, because of time zone differences and things like that, we have pretty regularly people playing from the Netherlands, from South Africa, from Australia, people who are booking, you know, or we have families who are, all throughout the United States and they're, you know, they have a daughter. I think I heard someone speaking, they have a daughter in San Francisco and they have a son in Chicago and they're saying, Hey, we want like, let's do something together. Um, and so people have been, have been doing that experience. So, you know, it's been, again, the, the context is like COVID is, is awful for everybody. Um, but having said that, it's been really fun just to see the Kansas city spirit. And I think really just the spirit of people who, um, don't want to let obstacles like this get us down any more than they have to. But to see that rising up and to see people participating has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. And you, yeah, you're right. It's, it's, it's given, I think, even the chamber an opportunity to get a little creative on, on what we do, how we offer the offerings that we have and, and still continuously engage, you know, with our members and the community. So um, it's, it's a weird, yeah, it's weird to say it's fun, but um, it, but I mean, you're not wrong, you know? So, um, so looking forward when we are back into the, the new normal, whenever that is, hopefully sooner rather, rather than later. Um, do you see any maybe positive impacts to the industry that you're in? 
um, and maybe yeah. some changes you're, you're going to make? Yeah, our our industry is it's fascinating, right? Because it's again, it's all predicated on people coming together. And I, I think there's a lot we're in kind of not a sweet spot necessarily, but I, I really feel for, you know, larger entertainment attractions that probably have a lot more hurdles and obstacles to be able to come back together. We have the ability to operate really small. Um, but I, I think COVID has been kind of the great um, expediter in that uh, there were a lot of businesses, I think, that, that were really struggling even going into this. And they've kind of used this as the either excuse or opportunity to say, you know what, like, this isn't, this isn't working out. This isn't what I want to do long term. I have a lot of people in the service industry who, uh, you know, through just interacting with incredibly mean people during COVID uh, have decided, you know, this, this isn't for me. This isn't what I want to do anymore. And I'm going to take this opportunity to, to learn a new skill or to try a new thing or to go travel somewhere. Um, I think for us, um, it, it has the, you know, the first week, this resounding kind of feedback was like, let me out of my house. Like where, what, like I have to get out. And not to say that we would encourage or want anyone to rush out, right? I think this has to be done thoughtfully. And I've been incredibly impressed with Mayor Lucas and the way that he's addressed this and said that publicly, you know, a week or so ago on, on LinkedIn. But um, I, I think what's been fun with all this is in light of COVID, there's this realization of how important community really is um, and how important, you know, social engagement and interaction really is. And so um, we have confidence and faith and hope that, that obviously from a financial standpoint, things will come back to the, to the capacity that they were. But I think more so again, it, it sounds kind of cheesy, but just the human spirit and this realization that like we're meant to spend time together. Um, that is, that is what life is all about. And so I always, I get a little bit of a chuckle and I hope I don't sound too much like I'm drinking the own, my own corporate Kool-Aid that I've created, but it's like, man, we, we honestly, we exist to bring people together. Like that is our purpose. And so um, knowing that after COVID, you know, even in the midst of COVID, we get to continue to do that thoughtfully and intentionally. Um, I think it's just so important. And I think people are craving it. And I'm excited for, you know, when, when we all get to celebrate and really come back together in, in full in a way that is, you know, safe and, and happy for everyone who wants to be a part of that. Um, we'll get there, you know, I hope and I, th and I think I think we will. Yeah. <clears throat> Keep drinking your Kool-Aid, Matt, because you're doing great. <laughs> No, I think, I mean, you hit it right on the head, you know, in the, yes. <laughs> um, in the beginning, you know, it seemed like there was so much um, increased connectivity, whether it be, you know, families doing Zoom game nights or lots of um, employers. I know us at the chamber, we were doing, you know, regular happy hours and things like that. And um, it did seem over time, you know, once we all got so much screen time that um, mm -hmm. possibly the, the Zoom happy hours, you know, were kind of dwindling, but it's so great, you know, to hear that you guys have the breakout rooms, you know, things that can bring families together or team development or things, you know, like that. I think that's incredible that you guys have pivoted um, to offer those things. Um, also super interesting to hear that you have a background in leadership development. So kind of with that, I'm curious, you know, what have you done with the staff that you've been able to maintain um, just for morale building, team togetherness, and then even on your own, you know, what are you doing um, independently to keep your morale and your spirit up in, in such a difficult time? Yeah, it's, gosh, this is, you know, for our company, and when I say our company, I really mean more Swellspark. I mean, at corporate headquarters, I mean, it's, it's been brutal. Um, and I know that, you know, many other businesses, this, it's reflective of that as well. But we, we laid off 240 employees when this all started, myself included, um, about 15, 20 of those were at our corporate headquarters in Kansas City. Another 220 were direct labor on staff. And then the PPP program came through and we were very fortunate to be one of the recipients of that program. And so, but we, you know, we knew that the program initially was for eight weeks. And, and so we told folks coming back, you know, hey, we can bring you back for eight weeks, but we're, if we're not open at the end of the eight weeks, if we're not fully open, we don't know. We, we have no guarantees past eight weeks. We're going to try our best. And, and as it would come, you know, at, at eight weeks was right when we were getting our ninth store back open, but we still are nowhere close to the normal revenue that we need in order to keep the full headquarters that we had. So it's kind of, 
it's kind of like we had to break up with people and then we're like, you know, sad that we broke up. So we kind of got back together and then we kind of had to break up again, which uh, I'm, I hope I'm not minimizing this. It's obviously, I mean, it's, it's awful. Um, I don't mean to make light of it, but it, more, more than any other season, it's been so hard to keep morale up. You know, we, we rehired and then had to re furlough some folks who I didn't even get to see in person, uh, which is, it's just, it sucks. Like there's no, uh, there's I don't know another way to say it um, and so I think from the morale standpoint and, and, and I know that there's a lot of businesses who have done this differently but one of the very first things that we did was get back in the office together um, and we're very fortunate we have a we're, we're a unique company we have a design build fabrication portion of our building and so we have a 36,000 square foot office in Kansas City and there's nine of us so we're like you, you feel like we got enough space right and it's like I got my 4,000 square feet. I think we're, I think we're okay. Um, but just getting back together and the fact that when we have questions about our design work or when we have questions about how a prop is being fabricated for an escape room, instead of doing the zoom thing, like the fact that I can go even stand, you know, 15 feet away from our fabrication manager, Andrew, and be like, Hey, can you show that? And they'll show it to them. And they're like, Oh, just this human interaction is, is so good. And so now, with that being said, though, you know, we've we've kind of arrived at, OK, you know, we really we don't have to come back to the office every day. It, it honestly is just unnecessary. Um, and so we're at a point now where we're working three days a week in the office, two days a week at home. Um, you know, we have some folks who are still working remotely because they had to maybe go home or go away because of, of all the life situations. Um, but I think as far and more and you know as far as how to like what has morale looked like how can we increase that like we just did a big reset we cleaned our offices <laughs> before everyone came back you know we painted some things the idea was when people were coming back they were coming back to something that was new and exciting again as opposed to coming back to an office where it had a bunch of missing desks because it did um and just doing our best and uh, you know, we see the signs and the things that say we're all in this together and and that can come across, I think, pretty surfacely unless you show it with your actions as well. And so one of the ways that we show that with our actions is really just working our tails off. Um, you know, the people who, who were able and willing to come back are people that I think most uh, embrace and are most part of our company culture. And 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 that if we've, we've just been back, I think, again, referring to LinkedIn. Um, probably the thing that made me cry the most over COVID uh, is the day after we laid everybody off, I came in the office and one of our staff members who I literally had laid off the day before was in her office working. And I was just like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like I told you to go home. And she's like, wait, you know, there's still stuff to be done and I still believe in what we're doing. And um, gosh, it's, you know, that, that attitude has, has shown its face a number of different times throughout COVID, what we know with our staff and with other people outside who have, who have supported us, you know, in a variety of different ways. But um, it's, uh, you know, again, I come back to the human spirit, like it's just, there's, there's a, an economic value, of course, in getting back to work. And, and I think when we oversimplify the conversation, we forget that there's also just a, an intrinsic value of wanting to provide either for yourself or wanting to create and do cool stuff. And, and um, I think we're seeing that, you know, and, and so many people who have been part of our company have been on board with the mission of SwellSpark, which is to gather people and provide fun. Um, and I think we just believe in those things, again, because of the Kool-Aid. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's good too late. I love it. And, and what a good, what a good story too, about, you know, your staff member staying after practically volunteering her time, you know, for you guys. And, and it's, it's stuff you like to hear uh, during this and, and which kind of brings me to uh, the next question of, you know, we're always looking for some sort of positivity um, during all this kind of you know, hard time that we're going through. So any, any stories, any, any stories from friends, from families, from coworkers that you have that you want to share with us? I already shared some of the good ones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my, um, so going back, we did this hand sanitizer distribution. Um, and there, there's a woman in Kansas City who was buying, I think she was connected to, you know, a, a, a nursing community, retirement community, but she was buying a couple two liter bottles every week, which is, I mean, that's a lot of hand sanitizer. Uh, but she started, 
after, after she was done, she started buying Blade and Timber um, gift token. We had do these gift card gift tokens that we were also distributing with hand sanitizer in, in case people wanted to support our company directly. And she started buying them and she would leave a note that would say, give this to the 19th person of the drive-thru. Give this to the 202nd person of the drive-thru. Give this. And, and I think what's been, you know, that's, that's one small example, but, um, you know, those of us who, who have kids, like we've realized, oh my gosh, if we don't plan what our kids are going to do today, like this is going to be crazy. And this is going to be, this is going to be nuts. Like it's not going to work. And this idea of planning and intentionality, you know, is, is the premise of why Blade and Timber and Breakout KC have been, I think, successful in that, um, like you are, you know, you're going to show up and have fun because you're like, I'm not paid money and this is a fun experience and it's proven. And, but I think that the intentionality of, of whimsy or just like what we do in our daily lives to have fun on purpose, to be joyful on purpose, to love each other on purpose, to serve each other on purpose. It's one thing to, you know, and we could talk about all of the things that have happened through COVID. It's one thing to say publicly, hey, I stand with this thing or I'm behind this group or I'm behind this idea. But it's a whole other thing to actually put feet on the ground, make a plan and help be a part of the solution that you are either in need in your personal life or in this community thing. And, and I think if I were to sit back for 10 minutes, we could we could all probably think about 20 ways that we've just seen people like, make each other's day because they did so on purpose. Um, and so I, not so much specific things, Brandon, but I think this idea of, you know, self betterment and making a difference and sharing joy, like often comes with thoughtfulness and comes with doing that with intentionality and doing it on purpose. And so I've been really impressed with, with that, the same, the same gal, right. Who was stayed um, after we laid her off has decided through COVID that she wants to move to Nashville. Um, and we've seen and we've seen things like that, and I'm really pumped because she has a job interview today with a Nashville company that we, you know, uh, were able to kind of introduce her to. And um, but I think this this big thing of like getting to ask the question, okay, what do I want to do with my life, and then being able to figure out hopefully some tangible steps of how to get there. Um, it it just it it makes me so excited when people realize that if you were doing something you didn't like. Uh, if you were in a season that you weren't excited about that, that this is like the great cultural reset in many ways of like, we should really, we should try to do this thing the right way. And so let's, let's do that. I know that's like a really big non-answer. I'm great at not answering your questions, Brandon, but um, maybe you're just going to have to deal with it. It was, per it was perfect. It was great. No, I love it. It's a great answer. You're moving people to tears on the call. Like you're just, <laughs> It's really quite motivating, Matt. Like, my gracious, this is, this is fantastic. So um, I think we're going to move into just a little bit of Q&A. So if you guys have a question for Matt, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Brandon will kind of filter um, that out and, and pull some. But um, as we kind of start looking at what those questions are going to be for you, Matt, and kind of put you in the hot seat more, uh, my question is, is how can we, um, as a community, business professionals, the chamber, whatever, um, continue to help support you and Swole Sparks mission and your guys's cause um, to just keep things moving. You know, obviously the economy continuing to move and, and we want to help support as best we can. So what can we do for you? Um, that's a great question. The, the really easy answer, of course, is like come to Blade and Timber, come to Breakout. If you're talking about just like helping me, like that would obviously that would mean the world. I, I think yeah. we and, and in return, we'll give an incredible experience in a capacity that's as safe as I think humanly possible right now. Um, but not everyone is, is willing. You know, that's, and we have virtual things for folks who don't want to leave their house, all this. But I think I think the bigger piece is and again, this is not going to be a direct answer, Katie, but. Um, I mean, there's so much good information out there as far as what COVID is and what it isn't. And there's a lot of bad information. And it's really easy, I think, to get scared by, um, by bad headlines or by people who don't have the right degrees, <laughs> you know, sharing information. But I think to have the conversations and make sure that we're making fact-based decisions um, is one of the best things that we can do. One of those is wearing masks, I think, is a pretty dang good thing to do in public. And, and we've seen that. But um, gosh, I'm really butchering this particular answer. Um, 
I'll go back to, you know, you mentioned in the very early days of COVID, there were a lot of, uh, you know, happy hours and there were a lot of these digital events. And I think people loved them because they were novelty. Um, but I think more importantly, it's not that people stopped enjoying those events. It's probably that we just dove in and did too many of them. Um, mm. And so it, it swung back the opposite direction where now I think there's not nearly as many of them happening. Um, and people are, are p p potentially not being quite as intentional as they were to get together with people. I know like we have, um, my grandparents have seven like different grandkid, you know, either married couples or whatever. And I'm just thinking out loud, like we were doing a great job. We all kind of decided we're going to call grandma and grandpa. And we all like assigned ourselves a day. Like I had Wednesdays um, and, and we were doing great for like five weeks. And I'm like, crap. I don't think I've called grandma and grandpa for a couple of, I need to, I need to do that. Um, and so maybe, you know, COVID for many of us kind of wrecked our normal routines and habits. And then we decided what our routines and habits were going to be in COVID world. And, but I think we made a lot of those with the assumption that it was going to be very, very short term. And so now that we're realizing that might be a little bit longer term, we might, it might be a good time to consider, okay, what, what habits, what things can I do to intentionally seek out my friends and family? How can I share time with them? How can I create joy with them? With them? Knowing that this might be a little bit longer of a season than we had initially hoped or thought for. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, it's brought us closer. I, you know, like you said, I, we've, I've had calls with family members, you know, all across the country and people I might not normally talk with, but, um, if you can still hear me, I saw you take your, your, your headset out. I got, out. You're I got good? the left one's good. Awesome. We're good. Awesome. I've got one more question for you, and sure. you have to give me a direct answer on this one. Um, what, besides, you know, Blade and Timber's food, because it is delicious, uh, what has been your favorite, your go-to carry-out, take-out restaurant in Kansas City about this? This is actually, this is a bad question. And I'll <laughs> say that just because... Um, all right, so my wife and I, we dieted, right, at the start of the year. Yeah, um, okay. And, but this particular diet program we did talked about what type of eater you are. And what we realized is my wife is a food for fun person. Uh, <laughs> and that, like, she really, like, we go to restaurants, she likes to try all sorts of things. I am a functional eater. Like, give me calories and give it to me quickly. Um, I mean, honestly, I've eaten more McDonald's over COVID. <laughs> than any other restaurant. And I'm, I'm not necessarily proud of that, but like, man, it's, it's down the street and it's like a dollar 50 for my meal and it's great. Um, there is, a, but I'll, I will give you a direct answer, Brandon. Um, <laughs> like, dang, finally, um, I have to give a shout out to Chris Good and Ruby Jeans. Uh, one is he's been really, uh, I think a pillar of the Kansas City community for what he's been doing culturally and what he's been doing and standing up for what is right. Um, but he has, uh, so we've taken his juice. He, he makes this and he has a number of different kinds and we've taken it home and we have made it into popsicles. And so we are doing that with regularity. And so I'm tricking my kids into drinking healthy juice and they, they're like, Dad, can I have a third popsicle? I'm like, oh, yeah, you get that third popsicle. And they're like, we, and they'll even say, we love sugary stuff. And little do they know, oh, well, they, oh, there is natural sugar. I'm like, bro, you're getting health. You're getting vegetables right now. I'm and then you're the you super cool years. dad, too, because you're giving them popsicles. That's great. <laughs> yeah, like unlimited popsicles at the base of your house right now. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think, you know, Chris, Chris does an incredible job. His food is amazing. I'm going to, that is, that is my final answer, Brandon. Um, specifically the takeaway two liter juice at Ruby mm -hmm. Jeans has mm -hmm. been the COVID staple of the basic family served as popsicles. I love it. That, that, that was a good answer. <laughs> that's what, that's what I was looking for. I like it. Well, Matt, I, we'll, we'll, we're going to jump into some networking, but man, I, we really do appreciate you joining us and, and what a delight it was to hear you and, and just so you're just so genuine about um, everything, and and you know, you. we love Swell Spark, we love Blade and Timber, Breakout KC, all of them. Um, can't wait till we're back to normal, of course. Um, Appreciate it, man. Enjoy your time in Hawaii. I don't know how much you'll be able to actually enjoy it. You'll be, you know, working, but it's Hawaii, you know. So. Yep. No, well, yeah. I'll do my best. I I appreciate it. And thank you all for, again, sometimes I drone a little bit, but now uh, thanks for listening and hanging out and look forward to hopefully seeing y'all in person, you know, at some point in the near distant future. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. All right. All right. We're going to jump into some networking. Um, let me go ahead and
Get hey, the breakout before, rooms. Go ahead, Katie. Yeah, you, you get it. those going. And um, I just want to give a couple of shout outs. Um, first of all, we have some chamber staff on the call. So if you guys are unfamiliar with our team, uh, Taylor Hammersmith is with us. You know me, you know Brandon. Um, but some a very exciting news that I would like to share is that at the chamber, we've made some um, really great adjustments in staffing wise. And so I want to be the first to introduce you guys to Vicki Kulikoff, which you all may know, but you may not know that she has recently accepted a new position with the chamber of our director of small business, which is very exciting. Um, Vicki has been with the chamber for, I don't know, five, six years. I'm not great with, with year timelines, but um, she's done an incredible job. So every one of you who knows Vicki that's, that's had the privilege of talking with her and connecting with her, you know that this is a very well-deserved promotion. So we're excited um, to have Vicki in this role. And so those of you that are on the call uh, that are with small businesses, you will be hearing from her quite a bit as we start moving into our new small business celebration timeline and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, just join me in congratulating Vicki on that promotion because we are very excited. Um, and then secondly, uh, your lead here, Brandon Kreckel, uh, we were able to promote him as well to our new manager of member engagement. So um, again, you guys know Brandon and his hard work and all that he's doing. So uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled always to get to work with these individuals and everyone else at the chamber. But for the chamber to be able to, in times like this, see our staff teams um, acknowledge the hard work that they're doing and provide them with uh, great opportunities of growth. I think it's, it's a real testament of what the chamber stands for um, and just an incredible organization. So I have more than thrilled uh, to get to work with these two and celebrate their successes. So I just wanted you guys to be the first to know that, um, that they've accepted these roles and we're really proud of them for that. So congrats, Vicki, congrats, Brandon. Um, Taylor's on the call, she's still pretty cool. So. Uh, you guys know Taylor, she's just in a different role, but that changed. <laughs> so anyway, Brandon's going to throw you guys in some rooms to network and some chat and do what you're here to do. So thanks again for joining us this morning. And Brandon, it's all yours.